Alright, and of course, welcome to another LBA battle from yours truly, the Scarender. And now we are in week 7 against Grail or Pori Blazigans. And as you guys see, there is no team analysis video, so I'm gonna go briefly over what I had in store. The reason I have no pre video is because work has been really busy, and I sadly don't find the time to actually record the game as I wanted to. Now, this will be a longer intro, therefore, you will see text for the battle ends if you don't wanna hear the pre game and what I had in store. But all in all guys, sadly due to work, and it's gonna be like this for two weeks, I rarely will get the time to do a team analysis video because I basically make the team at the same day as I'm facing my opponent, roughly. Uh, so anyway, my opponent brings pretty much what I expected him to bring, so I was actually kinda glad of that. He's bringing Chansey, Crawdont, Crobat, Mega Medicham, Hippowdon, and Eladios, or is it Ladias? No, that's Eladios. So, my team is pretty much on par, a bit surprised that I didn't bring Dewblade, or rather not surprised, but I really thought I should have brought Dewblade since Crobat and Medishap was so easy to use against me, and I was not a big fan of that, but with mons such as uh, Crodon, I really really didn't feel like it would be a safe way of me bringing it, because the knockoff just destroys my Dewblade. So, I decided to actually bring a Smooth Rock um, Tyranitar with Southland and Sand Slash. A lot of aggression, God War Walls, Ladias. Uh, Thunders can Oko the Crodont and pretty much kill the Medisham. And Keldeo is overall a great response for his Crodont if something doesn't work. But outside of that, I'm fairly aggressive. And um, of course, the Guard Warrior Scarf basically to outspeed everything he's needed and has Healing Wish in case something gets whittled down. So, yeah, that's the team preview basically. So, with all this in mind, let's actually go. So at the lead here, he's gonna lead off his lad, yes, and I have knocked off all my Thunderous, so I knew that if I knock off a Specs or Life Orb, I can survive a potential Draco. I know it sounds risky, but at this point I was like, yeah, I should be able to pull this off. Uh, there is a very, very small chance that Draco would have taken me out, or it can't take me out, but it could have gone a crit or something like that. So I'm lucky I am actually scoring off, of course, the, that kill. Now, had I been Life Orb, I probably would have killed him, but it was a roll. Uh, now he will actually outspeed me, showing me that I have EV'd my Pokemon a bit wrong because we're not supposed to speed tie. Luckily for me, I should say, is that while <laughs> while I do already speed tie here with him, I actually get the chance to survive. He doesn't go for an offensive move, which is great. So I'll take the time to switch into Ranitar and Pursuit Trap him because I knew that the only way he could probably win this matchup is by actually start attacking me. And if I bring God of War, he's just going to switch out. So. Tyranitar is the superior play here, and he goes for a side shock, luckily for me, and now he's dead. Had he roosted there, he would not have survived Pursuit Trap. He needed to be a full HP to have a chance to do so. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling really lucky here. And obviously, the first turn almost played as well as I wanted to. Like I said, I was supposed to outspeed it, so feeling that that was kind of bad because I'm forcing Tyranitar to come in, and he's going to bring Buster. And here's the thing, Buster hurts everything in my team, without a doubt in my mind. And I know when he may have volley, he's most likely going to go for Drain Punch or a High Jump Kick. And I really firmly believe that this is probably my best response because he will not go for a Fake Out. There's no reason for him to go for a Fake Out against the Tranitar. And I have no real switching outside of the Guard War here. But like I said, Medicham was probably the reason I wanted to in the first place. But he goes for High Jump Kick and yeah, we don't take that all that well. That's four times resisted people. And with Sandstorm, we're forced to half HP. He has the thing though. He doesn't really have a lot of switching, the only real switching he has is, of course, his Chansey. So knowing that, I'm going to go into my Keldeo. Uh, it's either that or Crobat, but I think that Crobat was very unlikely, and uh, Chansey is extremely safe. So, did a good prediction there. Sadly, I don't follow that up properly, because I go for a secret sword, fully aware of that um, I should have gone for an Icy Wind. I actually had my notes that, you know, Icy Wind is... Every, you have to go for Ice Wind every time as long as Crobat is arrive, or alive to win the speed tie. I don't do that, and I go for Secret Sword, and that's going to do nope. So I lose a massive momentum there, because I had a combo to kill the Crobat here. But, duh, missed that out, and that sucks. But at the same time, you know, he probably could have gone for U-Turn here, but I'm going to be dead by a Brave Burst. I'm going to go to Sand Slash, and hoping if he goes for a U-Turn, that it goes to his Crodont. Because I... Can't kind of take a, um, an awkward yet. I don't take that preferably well, but I know that if he brings his Crawdon, then an earthquake is pretty much a one hit KO if he's life for because the life for will take a toll on him. Like I said, but that's only if he has life for. If he has, doesn't have that, then I'm screwed. Luckily, he doesn't go for an awkward yet. Like I said, that was a roll. 
but I'm lucky here that it actually stays in. Now, he does live with a slitter health. I had a chance of killing him, but because of the sandstorm damage, sadly that doesn't come to fruition. But luckily for me, at least the Crawdon is out of the way. So the combo kind of went the way I wanted to, but at the same time, I really wanted that thing dead. Uh, but no, it is what it is, basically. So he's gonna bring back Crobat, and of course I'm bringing Selfius. And uh, of course this is a blind switch in, and you know, I felt that, alright, he's gonna go for U-turn again. No, he is not. And that sucks, because I lose Kelio there, and that it's terrible. I could have just switched in Tyranitar, there would be no ramification for me of bringing Tyranitar, bringing, of course, he's gonna go for U-turn, he's gonna subside with, of course, the Pursuit. But no, I don't do that, and that is just the worst. Now, here's the thing, here's when I feel it, like, okay, I'm gonna start stress play now, and I need my funders a good health, because losing Kelio means that Hippowdon just got a tad bit more dangerous, so I'm gonna go directly for the Healing Wish, and that might actually been a bad call, because obviously Thunders does outspeed no matter what. Or I could have actually Thunder waved that uh, Crobat and that would have been such a big deal. But um, I don't do that, I go directly for Healing Wish, bringing our class of course, the Healing Wish. And now I at least, I at least have a chance of actually knocking off uh, the Chansey's item and uh, then go for Volt Switch. Uh, because having, having it not having any Violite, it's helpful. Now he's gonna show me Toxic. I was really hoping that T-Wave Toxic is way worse, and also showing me Toxic means that he really, really wasn't prepared for a Dewblade. Um, Dewblade wall, as far as I know, a lot of his teams are feeling a bit frustrated I didn't bring Dewblade. Uh, so like I said, going to Vault Switch, there is really no reason for me not to here, and um, I'm gonna bring Rex of course, and here's the thing, I assume that he wants to Toxic me, because he really doesn't have a lot of responses here. Uh, he actually goes for softball, which is nice and kind of okay. And uh, I decided directly to go for the Stone Edge. Um, and the Stone Edge is doing, like, because of, of course, he doesn't have a Violet anymore, it does a lot of damage. Like, a lot of damage. And he's gonna follow that up with a Toxic, which is, of course, unfortunate, but at the same time, that was what I kind of hoped me for the first time around. Um, so that's okay, so now I'm gonna predict him to switch out, trying to preserve the chance of a death fodder. So I'm just gonna go for Pursuit anyway, and what do you know? Second buff from Tyranitar. So no one stays in on Tyranitar, at least not fleeing from him. Uh, so that actually worked in our favor, but here's the thing. I still need to deal with Crobat somehow, and I still need to dent the Largo, which of course he powered on. And with the three months I have left, I am really out of options. I really, really, really am. So I'm gonna go to Thunderous here, thinking that, you know, he doesn't have a real switch in to, of course, here, my Thunderous. There's the thing, though, I should have gone for a Volt Switch here, knowing that Crobat can take the Grass Knot, or go for some kind of neutral hit on it, like a knockoff or anything like that. Because I would that would actually have helped, because he can't touch me. Um, he must have Ice Fang, and if he has that, or Rock Slide, uh, it won't kill me. But I didn't do that, I don't really know why, that thought process didn't cross my mind. And he's gonna, of course, bring Crobat. Like I said, had I gone for a knockoff or a Vault Switch, things might have turned differently, but instead, I am just the worst. I really am. And here is another case of I don't switch out. I am so sure he's gonna U turn. So I still have the game at this side, kind of. I still need to, of course, dent the powder and whatnot. I still wonder why I didn't set up Stealth Rock with Tyranitar. I still wonder why I didn't do that. He's gonna go for Cross Poison, and um, yeah, he's gonna get a crit on me. That crit may have mattered somewhat, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure Sandstorm and Poison Damage would have taken a toll on me anyway. So I'm basically gonna bring Southland here, and the game is sadly over, people. I can't... I can't dent a power down. There is no way. I can't 2 it KO it with Southland. And uh, yeah, I screwed up. I screwed up big time. Like, looking through this game again, I really feel that shit. Uh, there were a lot of things here I should not have done. Um, I I stay in on so many things that I've designed to not stay into. So I'm just gonna start start speeding up this thing, as you guys will see. He's gonna stall me out, and it's okay. I mean, I'll I'll lose to defensive plays here, and um, he only succeed by doing that because I obviously did play a bit less aggressive than I should have done. But like I said, there I can't really be too mad either because I like I said I do leave in Pokemon's on matchups they aren't supposed to be in that and I'll lose Pokemon due to that and that series of play is what makes me lose this game it's quite simple as that and I 
the things that frustrate me is that I know exactly uh, where things went wrong. Like, once Roland was gone, I kind of stopped playing well. Or not to say like that, but I really thought I had a game at that point. I thought, he doesn't really have any switch in his left. I can, my stamina on my mods are really good right now. And this series of play is going to make me win without any real prediction. And how did that end? Well, it ends with that he can do a few good predictions and actually fall back on them. Which is awful. I, I should definitely have called up upon him, but I don't. And the result is as follows. So yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to like pinpoint what's... What one I should have preserved or played around with. But losing Keldeo is probably like the only thing that really dawns on me. And not setting up rocks with Tyranitar is also one of those things, because that would have meant that Krobop could not have been switched in. So there are a lot of those things. Like, I still question myself, why didn't I do that? I had all the time and stamina in the world to pull it up since his mons that were left was actually really defensive. He lost his two sweepers. I took care of them without a doubt. My offensive playstyle was more than enough to kill his Latios. I mean Ladias, and of course his Crodon, Devor, I had that in me, so not really making use out of that is the reason I lose here, and I think Grail plays good enough, I mean obviously he relied on his defensive play or mons he had left, to actually instead of trying to hit me, try to avoid getting dented, and that worked eventually because I didn't do anything to change that outcome, so Grail you played really good here, I'm not gonna take that away from you. But I'm really frustrated that I didn't play better, that I didn't. Like, once Kelly went down, I should alright, the game is not over. I, I think I, play, I take the win too early here. I really believe that once Crotom went down, that I felt extremely safe throughout this match. And the result of that is me losing. And it's really that simple. Not making a good prediction out of that is what kills me here. And, like I said, had I gone for a ball switch here in the end, I still had the game till, of course, the Hippowdon matchup, because I would still have been able to go on for both for the use of Hippowdon and be safe against it and get momentum out of that since it switched out. I don't do that and I don't switch out on it. I don't switch out on the on the Crobat and that series of plays is what makes me lose. And it really sucks that I fall for for that because I should definitely have called, uh, I should have called up upon it. But I don't do that and like I said, that's the reason I lose eventually. You can only make so many bad, bad plays in the series <laughs> without actually losing. So, Grail, you were the word winner of this match, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the future. Of course, make sure you survive your playoff, and I'll make sure to do the same, because I need my revenge on this. But yeah, with that said, guys, we're actually 3 for 4 now, and are barely in playoff, so we really need to start winning again, because this, this can't be foregone. I am not having a bad season like this in, like, forever. I've never lost so much in a, in a league, ever. So yeah, really need to step up my game, and the only way to do that is by stepping up my game. I really need to take my time and prep better and smarter and have better ideas to how to, or rather, not feeling safe. Always do the better play if I can do the better play. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and well, let's hope next week goes better. Until next time guys, thank you so much for watching of course, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.